All right, welcome back. Mabuhay everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the afternoon and final session of day two of our conference, Indigenous Responses to Colonial Incursions. This event is in celebration of the 26th anniversary of the University of the Philippines Archaeological Studies Program and the quincentenary of Magellan's arrival in the Philippines. Again, I am Liz Aldiano from the UP Archaeological Studies Program, your host for this event. I hope we all had our lunch already because we will immediately start the second part of session four after I give a few reminders and house rules for our attendees. First, uh, in line with the Data Privacy Act, please be informed that this webinar is recorded and participating means that you are giving consent to be recorded. We are also being simulcast on Facebook. Just visit UPASP's Facebook page or go to the link flashed on your screen. Your questions are also highly encouraged. So if you have comments, or questions, kindly input them in the Q&A box, or if you are on our Facebook live streaming, please put your questions on the comment section. Questions will be uh, addressed during our open forum at the end of every session. And the most important of all, please be respectful and courteous to one another. Please uh, communicate appropriately. Also, uh, please be informed that electronic certificates will be given only to those who will submit our webinar evaluation form, and the forms will be given out before we close today's webinar. So uh, to officially start the part two of our last session of the conference, let me introduce our moderator, the moderator is currently taking their master's degree at UP Diliman Archaeological Studies Program, a graduate of AB History at the Polytechnic University of, of the Philippines, Manila, and currently an instructor at the Department of History in the College of Social Sciences and Development, also in PUP. Please welcome, and I'm going to pass the mic to Ms. Shireen R. Ram. Hello, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Um, happy anniversary, UPSP. So ngayong, uh, ngayong, ngayong araw po ay nasa huling bahagi na po tayo ng sessions na inihanda ng Archaeological Studies Program. Muli ako po si Shireen Diamboy, wala sa Department of History, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, at isa rin po akong estudyante sa Archaeological Studies Program. So upang formal na simulan ang session ngayong uh, hapon, uh, ipapakilala ko po sa inyo ang ating unang tagapagsalita. Ang ating pong unang tagapagsalita na may papel na pinamagatang ang pagsalakay ng ang pagsalakay ng mga aklasong bayan sa Simbahang Katolika um, 1621 to 1683 ay si Sir Arvin Lloyd B. Pingol. Siya po ay isang instructor sa Departamento ng Kasaysayan sa Politeknikong Universidad ng Pilipinas, Santa Mesa. Kasalukuyang nagtatapos ng masterado na masterado sa kasaysayan na sa pamantasang de la Sal, Maynila. Patnugot ng dalawang publikasyon sa bagong kasaysayan o bakas, um, uh, ang pagtatakda sa luneta, ang monumento at ang tore sa kasaysayan, hirayan ng knights at pas pas pasya ng bayan noong uh, 2015 at pamana ng ikalabing siyam na daan taon, pagtatakdang pangkasaysayan, bayani at heroe sa pagbubuo ng bansa noong 2017. So, let's welcome Mr. Sir Ar Arvin Lloyd Pingol ang aking kasamahan sa trabaho. Hi, Sir Arvin. Maraming salamat po sa pagpapakilala. So, isi-share ko na po yung PowerPoint. So, ito po yung papel ukol sa pananalakay ng mga klasang bayan sa Simbahang Katolika 1621 to 1683 isang paksa na palasak na sa mga general histories of the Philippines pero mas bibigyan natin toon yung pananalakay sa mga simbahan at sa mga prayle no na nagsasagawa ng mga misa dito okay 
Uh, maraming naganap ng mga klasang bayan sa mayigit tatlong dang taong pananakop ng mga Espanyol sa Pilipinas. Mula sa mga entradas hanggang sa tuluyang konquistas ay palagi ang may nagaklas sa pamumuno ng mga Espanyol. Mula sa buhatan ng Tondo noong 1587 to 88 hanggang sa imagsikang 1896 ay matatahi ang mga magkakaugnay ng mga karanasan ng mga Pilipino at kanilang mga paraan ng pakipaglaban sa mga mananakop. So lahat ng yan ay makikita natin bilang isang nakatahing kasaysayan at hindi isang ang putol-putol ng mga pangyayari lamang. Sa kaso ng papel na ito, tutuntunin ang kaisipan sa pananalakay ng mga Pilipino sa mga simbahan at mga misyonerong Espanyol, kalinsabay ng mga pananalakay nito sa pamahalang Espanyol sa Pilipinas o yung mga opisyales. Partikular na datalakayin sa papel na ito ang mga klasang bahay sa panahon 21, 621, 23, 83 at kung bakit pangunahing sinasalakay ang mga simbahan at mga praile sa pagsisimula ng mga klasang bayan. No, at ito yung ilang larawan ng ilang mga nag-revolt no? ng ikalabing pitong dan taon. Uh, una, uh, i- ipapakita ko no, kung ano yung mga accounts no, na, na, uh, ng mga revolts na ito at kung ano yung ginawa ng mga, uh, mga nag-a-class no, laban doon sa mga Espanyol, no, particular yung sa simbahan, sa mga kagamitan sa simbahan at sa mga praile nito. No? Sa mga gadanes noong 1621, ayon dito, in the village of Abuatan, they stuck the church and the sacristy and made a jest and derision of the things which they found there. They treated irreverently that which they had a little before reverence. The women put on the frontals as pericots or sayas, and of the corporals and the pals of the chalices, they, uh, they made headkerchiefs. Uh, they dressed themselves in the habits of the religious and even went so far as to lose their respect for the image of the virgin. There was one man who dared to give it a slash across the nose saying that the see if she will bleed no? So uh, may 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 pagsalakay doon sa sa simbahan no? at uh, pagyurak doon sa uh, mga kagamitan sa simbahan sa ginawa ng mga gadanes. Sa Bohol naman no kay Tamblot no 1622 uh, ayon dito they burned the poor villages and their churches. They flung on the ground the rosaries and crosses and pierced an image of the Blessed Virgin 18 times with javelins. So yung kung kanina, kung hiniwa, ito naman ay sinaksak yung, uh, yung rebulto no, ni Birhing Maria. Sa pananalakay naman nila Bangkaw sa Leyte, 1622, Spaniards also cut off the head of an Indian who had robbed Father uh, Binancio and broken to pieces an image of the Virgin and kick crucifix and his head was set up in the same place where he had committed those horrible sacrileges. Uh, so, ganun din. Uh, uh, sinira yung Berhing Maria at uh, uh, pati yung ilang mga kagamitan pa sa simbahan. Sa Mandaya naman, noong 1625, Mandayas who were in Kapinatan Rose and two of them, Don Miguel Lana, and another chief name, Alababan. So, ang nangyari dito ay uh, gusto nilang... Uh, uh, may balak na talaga sila no na sa Malacay pero pinuntahan nila yung dalawang pare na nandoon no sa uh, Kapinatan at na nag nag na, nag uh, naghahapunan no yung yung dalawa no na si Fray Alonso Garcia at si Fray Onofre Palau at uh, tinanong nila kung pwede ba sila pumunta doon sa dati nilang lupain na pagmamayari na noon ng mga uh, ng mga ng mga Espanyol no pero sabi nila Uh, sabi ni, ni Father Alonso ay ire-refer nila doon sa regular priso yung pura paroko nung kanilang lugar at uh, mula sa pagsabi na yon ay hinataw no o buong lakas na hinataw ng uh, balaraw ni uh, ni Alababan si Fray Onofre na siyang nagpapugot sa ulo nito no at uh, sumunod naman si ganun din si Don Miguel Lana hinataw niya rin si uh, Fray Alonso naman munit nasangga ito ni Fray Alonso Uh, sa kamay pero tinamaan pa rin ng kanyang muka hanggang sa sunod-sunod pa rin siyang uh, uh, tinagtad nung, uh, nung balaraw. At pata- pagkatapos nun, saka umalis no, yung uh, mga nagaklas na ito. Gayun din, dagdag pa, the Mandaya set fire to the churches and they defiled them by a thousand sacrileges. They struck off the head of a Christ and cut the body down the middle, dividing it into two parts which were afterward found by the religious who came to bring them back obedience. Sa Karaga naman, no 1629, most exemplary punishment were seen and experience and singular portents in the profane and destroyed images. An idolatrous Indian in sport of an image of the crucified Christ threw it into fire. He observed with wonder that the fire, with that the fire, respecting the image, did not burn it. The barbarian took it from the fire and buffeting it, threw it down 
uh, with great violence so that one of its uh, one of its arms was broken so pinagingitan nila hindi lang yung mga pare hindi lang yung simbahan kundi yung mga kagamitan mismo sa Nueva Segovia naman uh, they showed respect to the father Bicar and all of them weeping with him on the account of bold undertaking in which they found themselves involved no parang ang nangyari kasi rito uh, uh, yung mga nagaka-class uh, in in line no makikisimpat siya doon sa pare pero dinala nila yung pare na yun sa isang kumbento sabi nila yun yung pinaka uh, secure place pero ang ginawa nila ay uh, sinunog nila yung simbahan pati yung kumbento kung nasa nila nilagay yung prile na yun. Sa Gapang naman sa Pampanga, the delusion of the Indians of Gapang went so far that they seized arms and summoned to their aid many hit and sambals and burned the churches of Santor and Pantabangan. Pray Alonso Carbajal decided to send the father lecturer Pray Juan de Amarca, a religious for whom the natives of that district had much affection and respect. No? So dito naman, uh, medyo may pagkiling, no? kahit pa paano, dahil may kaugnayan na talag sila doon sa pari nila no at uh, yun yung nagpatigil nung, nung kanilang pagaklas no pero bago yun uh, meron din sila no Nags nagsunog pa rin sila ng simbahan sa pintados naman uh, ng palapag samar no at Tuesday then the first day of one uh, of June in the year 1649 the traitor selected for his uh, sacrilegious parricide and as a thief in the house who knew its avenues of entrance and address very well he took his stand within awaiting the father No, si Prime Miguel Ponce Barberan at the top of the stairway when he should ascend it after supper. While the father halted on the stairs to say a prayer for the souls in purgatory for which it happened, the bells were ringing, so Moroy hurled a javelin at him from above which pre, uh, pierced his breast and immediately brought him to the ground. No, so sinaksak naman ni uh, si Moroy itong uh, pare. Uh, they gave the fathers and the brother whom they found in the house the opportunity to live. Uh, Uh, pinala, pinaalis yung uh, ilan pero kailangan iwan nila lahat ng gamit nila doon sa lugar na yon no particularly uh, yung mga kagamitan ng simbahan church and house profaning the ornaments cutting them the drawers and turbans according to old time usage uh, and in almost all the villages on that coast they burned their churches the ministers fled and the rebels retreated to the mountain so laging ganun yung ginagawa no after ng pagsalakay pupunta sa kabundukan no uh, nagiilihan no uh, bilang kanilang uh, lunsaran at uh, uh, atrasan ng kanilang mga pagatake. Uh, dagdag pa rito, uh, yung asawa ng kasamahan ni Sumoroy, si Doña Maria Malon, went to the church uh, and saved some holy images and ornaments, which they afterwards surrendered to him. No? Ang kakatwa rito, nung malaman ito ni, ano, ni Sumoroy na Uh, yung lady yung imahe ng uh, o yung rebulto ng Lady of the Conception ay lumuluha daw at nagpapawis no uh, the virgin mary is weeping no sabi ni Sumoro eh, let us see if uh, she will weep if we burn the house no and he went Peter with other men like himself and set fire to it sinunog din nila uh, marami doon sa mga pag-aklas at doon sa uh, pagano pa, sa bagay na Uh, pagsira doon sa mga kagamitan ay kino-question nila kung kaya bang protektahan ng mga Diyos na ito yung kanilang mga sarili kung ito ang gagawin namin sa kanila. So dagdag pa, si Don Pedro Kaamo who descended the hill with 200 insurgents and returned to the village of Palapag where he killed the father minister Vicente Damian. And after that, sinunog din nila yung uh, simbahan no? at uh, matapos yun ay pumunta na naman sila sa kanilang uh, kampo, no? sa kanilang uh, kuta. Uh, mula sa mga pananalakay na pinasimulan ni Sumoroy sa Palapagsamar, umusbong pa mga pananalakay sa iba't ibang dako ng Pilipinas. Partikular sa Camarines na siya nagbunsod naman upang sumalakay din ng mga tagamasbate. Dahil na rin sa kaguluhan, nagbunsod na rin ng mga pananalakay sa Cebu. No? Nagpatuloy pa sa ibang lugar gaya ng Karaga, the men of Linao revol revolted by the murder of the uh, father prior and of the Spaniards in a small garrison which was kept there. Some dozen in number, but few escaped, and those were badly wounded. Pinatay din nila yung prior. Dagdag pa in the province of Iligan, which borders on Caraga, the Manobos sees the peaceable village of Cagayan. The entire coast and the adjacent island of Camigin follow their example. In Camigin, they bound the, uh, they bound the uh, father prior, Indians going so far as to place their brutal feet on the neck of the holy religious. No? Tinapakan naman. 
in the jurisdiction of Sambuanga and the Sobanos went astray. Their principal village, named Siocon, releasing itself from obedience with the sacrilegious parricide of Father Juan del Campo. Pagpatay din sa trial. Uh, sa Pangasinan naman, Malong directed his efforts to capture by force the village of Bagnotan, one of the richest and most populous of that province. The loyalty of the people proved very costly to them for they were suddenly attacked one night by Don Andres Malo. And then, uh, sinunog din yung uh, mga simbahan. Nagdag pa, uh, Don Andres Malong set fire to the village of Binalatongan and plundered it of everything. And he burned the church and convent, the images of the saints which were therein becoming the prey of that barbarous multitude, who trampled on uh, and broke them in pieces, venting on these figures of the saints the fury and madness which obliged them to retreat to the mountains. At uh, yung Espanyol na si Estebar was informed how, the, how among the ravages and cruelties which the rebels had committed in the village of uh, Malangway. They had demolished the church and convent in, and in order to use the planks in this for making their fortifications and in a ticket had been found an image of Mother of God. Sinira yung simbahan para gamitin yung mga kahoy para doon sa kanilang tinatayong ilihan. No? At uh, maging yung uh, mga imahe, no? rebulto ay ginamit bilang mga pananggala ng mga uh, grupo ni Malong. Nagdag pa rito, uh, dahil nga yung isang imahe na nawalan ng na walang kamay nung nakita nila, binitbit nila yan nila Francisco de Estebar at uh, uh, ayon dito, uh, they carried the sacred image in a triumphal procession to Binalatongan where it was reverently deposited. It is said that the rebels used the hands of the sacred image as spoons for eating their cook rice, an act of insolence which was made known as being insurrection and rebellion against majesties. Both majesties. No? So, inamit bilang kutsara no? yung kamay ng Blessed Virgin Mary. Sa pananalakay naman ng mga Pangasinense sa Ilocos, uh, they plundered the church in the village of Ilawag no? uh, sa pamumuno ni Don Pedro Almasan. Tapos kinuha nila yung uh, ulo ng uh, Queen of Angels at uh, ipinutong no? sa kay Don Pedro Almasan yun bilang hari ng Ilocos. In the Rebel League were joined the villages of Pata and Kabikungan, administered by the fathers of St. Dominic. Their minister at that time being Father Fray Jose Santa Maria, hearing the tumult and the shouts of the rebels, he went out of the convent against the advice of a Spaniard, who had taken refuge in it. Father Fray Jose persisted in his resolution, but as soon as the rebels saw him, uh, many attacked him, and piercing him with many javelins, they cut off his head, and with a great delight, went to sack the convent. So, pinatay na naman ang Thailand. Sa Oton naman sa Panay, kay Tapar, the rebellious apostates consulted the demon as to what they should do. And in consequence, resolved to put Father Francisco to death. And they proceeded to carry out this decision. It was about midnight when they all came down to the village in a mob and some uh, surrounded the house which was made of bamboo and others began to thrust their lances through the openings of the floor between the bamboos, wounding Father Fry Francisco and uttering many abusive words. The Father Religious alarm at this peril sprang up intending to jump out at the windows as the house stood very low, not considering the greater the, uh, danger of this. No? At nung pagalabas niya nga sa bahay, uh, lalo siyang uh, pinagsal, uh, pinagsasaksak uh, no, ng mga, uh, uh, mga taga-oton. Okay? Uh, mula doon, and all he could do was to reach the cross which stood in the cemetery next to the church. He embraced it tenderly and in this position received many lance thrusts and thus his arms flung around the holy cross and uttering loving and devout words, he rendered his soul to the Lord. No? Uh, tapos umalis na no, yung mga uh, nanalakay. Sa Sambal naman, no, 1683, uh, ang ginawa kasi ni Fray Domingo dito ay... Uh, Uh, kinakausap niya yung mga bata no at ano yung ginagawa ng mga matatanda sa kanilang pananampalataya at uh, si Fray Domingo nalaman niya nga na kahit pa Kristiyano na yung mga Pilipino rito ay nagpapatuloy pa rin sila doon sa kanilang pag-aanito no sumasamba pa rin sila sa mga anito at may mga kagamitan pa sila doon sa kanilang mga ritual at mula doon uh, ito yung dahilan kung bakit uh, uh, pinakuha no pinasunog no sa harap ng mga tao ni uh, ng mga Pilipino yung uh, yung mga 
kagamitan na ginagamit nila sa pag-aanito, pinasunog yan ni Fray Domingo. And uh, sa galit ng mga tao, no, anger that what Fray Domingo had done to uproot their idolatries, these chiefs cons uh, conspire against him and resolved to take his life for which did Kalignao offers his services. Si Kalignao ay isang mamumugot ng ulo dun sa kanilang lugar. No? Uh, on November 12, 1663, Fray Domingo is treacherously slain on his return from Bauguen to Balakbak by Kalignao and an infidel na grillo named Kibakat with poison arrows. Some friendly Indians convey him to Balakbak uh, where he dies three days later. The commandant of the fort wishes to go, pan, uh, to, go to punish the Sambals for this murder, but the friar dissuades him, saying that if he leaves the fort, the Sambals would get possession of it and no religious or Spaniard will be left in Playa Honda. Soldiers are sent to seize the assassins, but he cannot be taken, for he is protected by the natives of the village, no? who all were present at the funeral, more from joy at seeing the father dead than from compassion, or sadness are, uh, at having lost him, thinking that with the death of father, Fray Domingo, they could again revive the, their idol worship. No? So, bumabalik pa rin sila doon sa uh, kanilang uh, dating paniniwala. Sa bilang konklusyon, marami sa mga pag-aaklas na naganap noong ikalabing pitong dan taon ay may mga kaugnayan sa pananalakay sa mga simbahan at sa mga pari nito. Bukod dito, madalas na sinusunog ang simbahan, gayon din ay sinisira, gaya ng pagputol, pagsaksak o pagtaga sa mga rebultong may kaugnayan sa mga santo. At pagsira din sa iba pang mga kagamitan pang katoliko, gaya ng rosaryo. Sa ganitong palagay, maaaring may kaugnayan ng ilan sa mga klasang bayan na ito sa ilang pagtingin. Una, maaaring paghihiganti sa pagsusunog sa mga anito at sa mga kagamitan sa ritual ng mga Pilipino nang isalin nila ito sa Kristiyanismo dahil sa unang uh, sa isang parte uh, sa isang banda ng uh, ng ng pagsasalin nila sa mga Pilipino sa Kristiyanismo ay sinusunog nila yung mga kagamitan no na ginamit sa pag-aanito. Gayun din, maaaring batay sa paniniwala ng mga Pilipino na mapapawalang bisa ang pagprotekta ng Diyos ng Kristiyanismo. Kung mawala na ang mga kagamitan ng simbahan at ng mga prayle mismo na sa kabilang banda naman, no, sa sa panig ng mga mga nag-aaklas ay meron silang patnubay doon sa mga anito kung saan sa ilang mga account sinasabi na nakakausap nila, no, yung kanilang mga anito at uh, bibigyan sila ng gabay nito. Uh, at ikatlo, maaaring paghihiganti sa mga ginawa ng mga Espanyol sa mga Pilipino sa iba't ibang aspeto ng pananako, maaaring gustong bumalik sa sa dating uh, sa dating kaayusan no nawala yung kanilang dangal no sa pagpasok ng mga Espanyol o kaya pagkamkam doon sa kanilang mga lupain. Isa pang mahalagang aspekto ay ang kabuuang pagnanais sa pananalakay ay ang pagbalik sa dating paniniwala. Malinaw ito sa ilang mga klasang bayan, partikular na kinatapar at sa mga sambal. Sa huli, bagamat hindi lahat ay tuluyang napagtagumpayan ang mga pag-aklas, magsisimula naman ito ng mga susunod pang mga klasang bayan hanggang sa mga susunod na dan taon tungong Himagsikang 1896 kung saan magtatagpo-tagpo ang mga katangian ng mga naunang nag-aklas at siyang magbubunsod sa pagtatapos ng kolonyalismo Espanyol sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Sir Pingol. Para po sa mga katanungan, maaari na po kayong magbigay sa ating Facebook Live at pwede rin po dito sa chat room. At namaya pong open forum ay isa-isahin po natin itong iba to sa ating mga tagapagsalita. So ang ating pong sunod na tagapagsalita ngayong araw na may papel na pinamagatang po Catholicism and Secretism in, as Indigenous Response to Colonial um, Incursion ay si Andrzej Magpantay. Andre Magpantay is a student of art studies at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. He studies Philippine and Asian culture and his current research dwells on the intersection of the Catholic religion and the Philippine and pop culture. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Andre Magpantay. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, my paper is actually for Catholicism Syncretism as Indigenous Response to Colonial Incursion. And it's part of an ongoing inquiry on the semiotic meanings and symbolism as found in indigenous elements in all Catholicism in the Philippines. And just a brief background, the spread of Catholic faith has been 
one of the motives during the Spanish colonial period. And although widely successful in various parts of the country, we still have traces of indigenous elements found, especially in folk Catholicism and syncretic uh, practices of Catholicism in the country. And um, folk Catholicism was described as the expressions of Catholicism practiced by different Catholic communities, not just in the Philippines, but in uh, different parts of the world. And according to their vote in 1982, said that um, folk Catholicism will occur once there is an intermingling between the folk religion and um, the Catholic faith. Meanwhile, when we, say, when we go to the indigenous elements, we always talk about the first people, native, untouched by um, colonial incursions. And the folk religion is um, mostly related to indigenous elements that we find in various literatures and that we would explore later on. On the other hand, syncretism is, in a Western tradition, is the combining of different beliefs and school of thoughts, especially with regards to different religions and mythologies. And in one literature, Schumaster in 1984 actually distinguished the difference between syncretic religion, syncretism, and folk Catholicism in the Philippines. So his argument exists that folk Catholicism is entirely different from syncretic practices in the country. And in this paper, we examine um, folk Catholicism and its traces in three categories, um, festivals, imageries, and practices, all in the point of view of arts and culture and in the context of the present. So first is that the Etihan Festival. Uh, in that Etihan Festival, which today is commemorated in honor of the Holy Infant Jesus or the Santo Nino in several provinces of Aklan and Panay. Um, originally, Ati Etihan actually means to imitate the Ati, and it was celebrated, uh, originally a pagan celebration commemorating the barter of Panay. And when the Ita accepted gifts from Brunei and Shiftings at that time, they celebrated with dance and music and they decorated their bodies with soot. And later on, this festivity was given a different meaning. A different meaning that the church gave was that um, they made it sort of, uh, they carried the image of the infant Jesus as they did the dances and the processions. And well, the Vero and Aguila, Aguila actually studied the different signs and symbols present in the Atietihan festival that relates back to indigenous symbolism as well. And recently, um, this has actually gained traction in international communities after some Filipino Americans said that associated the Atietihan festival with um, blackface. And it's very important that the original um, concept behind the Atietian festival uh, is floated back and for people to be aware of its origins since a lot of people mistook it as something that has been uh, quite different. On the other hand, the Sinulog, if the Atietian festival in concept was different by origin and its pagan roots, Sinulog on the other hand presents as, as the a different um, concept in terms of the dance itself being integrated into the festival. So in according to Sally Ann Ness, who was a scholar from Cebu, the Sinulog has a general meaning in terms of the dance for the Cebuano themselves. So she floated the three main movements in the Sinulog, mainly the Lihok, the Kasing Kasing or Sincerity. Lihok is the movement. And Halad or Sacrifice has been already steps done by the natives before um, the coming of the Spaniards. And according to her, the, the dance itself forms as a sign of a resilient Cebuano lifestyle that's been believed to be performed as a ritual even before the coming of the Spanish, uh, the Spanish colonization in the Philippines. And according to historical accounts, they have danced the Sinulog in honor of animistic idols long before the arrival of Magellan. And another example, although there has been no actual account associating this festival or the Kneeling Carwell Festival to um, an indigenous practices, it was, it's still associated that um, the way the Carabaos have been integrated into festival, especially with the uh, San Isidro Labrador, they make the Carabaos kneel, they decorate the Carabaos. And the main concept was for the health of the Carabaos and how um, farmers value the health of their Carabaos. It is supposedly related 
to the uh, values and beliefs of the people of uh, to, to the people. And lastly, we, we go to Pahiyas Festival. Um, the locals believed that the tradition is essential. Uh, oh, just a background before that, the Pahiyas is actually done today in honor of San Isidro Labrador. Same thing with the Niling Carabao Festival. But originally, um, the peasants and laborers will put their harvest at the foot of Mount Manahaw. But then today, what was originally pagan festival was transformed to the colorful um, festival that we have today. And in the introduction of Christianity in the island, uh, these local beliefs and practices were transformed to commemorate the life of saints. And this has been a catalyst in enculturation of the Western traditions in the Philippines and the religious uh, aspects have been given meaning in relation to certain festivals and in honor of saints. So now we go to imageries. Um, this is actually one of the focus of my main study. So the imageries, um, according to MacDonald, the continuous folk belief in divinities or spirits and structured pantheons in um, folk religions is very well lived until today. And the saints in Philippine folk Catholicism can be seen as a reproduction of these pantheons. And we think that the opposition between these two have been bridged carefully by friars at that time because the polytheistic nature cannot easily be um, completely destroyed. That's why they substituted it with the images of saints, beliefs in saints. And in Berlin, in Berlin he says that the stunning career of Santo Nino as a national icon is a representation of the Lika or Anito. And it's connected with the sun, the sea, and the culture. That's why in different parts of the country, usually the saints are related to the practice of that original town. Such as here in Batangas, we have, um, uh, we have San, Rafael, uh, San Rafael Arcangel was holding a fish uh, in relation to a fishing village and uh, Nuestra Señora de la Paz Buen Viaje for another fishing village. And what was interesting is this in part of Alitagtag in Bawan Batangas, which is a twin holy cross. A twin holy cross, um, I don't know if I could actually tell the tale, but um, supposedly it was a miraculous cross found and found by a, a, a lady in sort of a parts of the mountain that has been um, where water was sprouting from the cross. It was verified by different with the fires at that time, and the, the the wood in the shape of the cross was associated with the cross of Jesus. Another thing that is interesting about this is how um, indigenous elements has been used to present the cross to the people. It's in, enshrined in a metallic, in a bigger metallic cross. And as you can see in the pictures, there is the image of the, the smiling sun, which is pagan in origin in this um, cross. In relation, the agimat and anting and things that we practice that, that has been widespread in different parts of the country nowadays in Quiapo um, actually incorporates two different folk belief, uh, two, uh, two different beliefs. For example, you would see folk symbols such as the sun and then some all-seeing eye. But on the other hand, it coexists with the miraculous medal or the um, St. Dominic's, uh, Dominic's medallion. And these agimats are actually supposed to be, to maintain their so-called powers, people have to pray, uh, especially during Good Friday. And there are also reports that uh, it has been existing ever since and continue to do so, especially uh, even Makario Sakai. He wore a vest uh, that has this religious images uh, as he was fighting. He was fighting. And other examples, you see the Miraculous Medal, the St. Benedict's Medallion, and then the All-Seeing Eye in these uh, medallions that are coexisting together. And another is these so-called potions that they have. As you can see, um, they incorporate 
um, indigenous elements in the knowledge of, say, herbal plants and medicines, but at the same time, um, um, they are embedded with prayers when they are created. And the prayers, uh, according to the accounts, was supposedly um, Catholic prayers. And they exist together with Catholic um, sacraments. And another practice is the band of fertility rites, which is originally um, pagan in origin. The rituals that have been done in honor of the Anito, the Sede Diana Masalanta, was transformed into to honor the three patron saints of Obando, such as uh, Saint Pas Pascal and uh, Santa Clara and Nuestra Senora de Salambao. And they said that the rites were performed within the vicinity of La Dambana, but when the Spanish arrived, they forcibly converted the natives and changed the religious beliefs regarding these fertility rites and associated it. And until now, um, the previous uh, animistic um, practice has been um, associated with Catholic religion. And another aspect that I've, I've um, investigated in the, in the paper is during the Holy Week, the burol or the burial of the Senor. So the Santo Entierro was an essential part of the Holy Week celebration in the Philippines. And in another paper, actually, um, according to public historian Ambeto Campo, the burol in the Philippines actually uh, is lighted, well lighted, and people are there to accompany the dead body of the dead in order to, um, to avoid some elements to uh, getting the body, stealing the body, and as such, um, the practice was um, embedded in how we treat the Santo Entierro, which is the dead body of Jesus. And an account of this was written by De La Paz, an account of Senor, on how the Senor is dressed up and adored with oils, just like a datu. And the image is a three-day wake in the Philippines. In, in, which I have a first-hand experience is that um, it highlights, the, it's highlighted in a procession and at night, just before, I think, uh, just before the Sunday, an image of the Virgin Mary would come to meet, to, to go to the wake of Jesus. And another aspect in burial tradition is in Banawe, where they have retained the practice of putting the, um, of burying the dead above ground, but still in this uh, one picture and, and more actually is that you see here a cross embedding the Catholic faith in it. And I, and the next thing is also part of the uh, Holy Week in the Philippines, which is Pabasa and Passion. And before involving into contemporary ritual today, the early forms of Abasa were said to be um, the vocal singing style by itself is um, from the preserved pre-Hispanic singing techniques of the main groups of the country in Tagalog, Ilocano, and Visayan ethnic groups. And just some concluding thoughts, after in, uh, the, the investigation of these different forms uh, widely in the country, um, to observe the virus in different unique ways and the celebration of saints, such as to the original practices in each town and cities indigenous people, such as in the case of the originally pagan at the Atian festival in concept, whilst today the Ati Atihan has changed completely its meaning. On the other hand, there has been elements in the terms of dance, such as in the Sinulog, has been remaining, but originally has a different meaning. Meanwhile, the devotion to the images of saints has been called to be a product of fulfilling the need to integrate the Catholic religion in the Philippines. And the creation of Anting Anting coincides with Catholic beliefs of sacraments, while on the other hand, the Anting Anting uh, is continuously surviving all throughout while being embedded with prayers by themselves. And the practices, on the other hand, is a remnant reading Holy Week, such as a three-day wake of Santo Entierro and or the Poon, invites insight to indigenous burial practices in the country that has been um, applied to the practice of Catholic faith in the country. And 
we see that these findings somehow directly relate to the response of indigenous peoples as we kind of examined it in the context of the presence as both a resistance and a combination of resistance and a conformity which resulted to these folk practices and Catholicism. And I think th that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, again, wag po tayong mahiya magtanong. Pwede na po natin iba to ang mga katanungan para sa open forum mamaya. At magtutungo na po tayo para sa huling tagapagsalita ngayong hapon. Ang ating pong huling tagapagsalita ay may papel na pinamagatang Music, Ritual, and Headhunting in Northern Luzon, Historical Resistance, Uh, conformity and Transformation. Siya po ay si Dr. Arsenio Nicolas. Um, Dr. Arsenio Nicolas is a visiting professor, especially at the College of Music, Mahasarakham University, Thailand, where he has taught since 2010, offering masteral and doctoral courses in ethnomusicology, music theory, and music archaeology. He finished an AB in English and Comparative Literature in 1973 and an MA in Philippine Studies in Music and Anthropology 1989, both at the University of the Philippines and PhD in Musico uh, Musicology at the Colonel University in 2007. He has taught courses at the College of Music, Center for International Studies and Archaeological Studies Program, a course in Music Archaeology at the University of the Philippines. He, his current research interests are archaeological and historical musical exchanges between Southeast Asia, East Asia, South Asia, literature inscriptions, and performing arts. His, fields, uh, his field music studies over the, the past 50 years covered the Philippines, Java, Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, United States, Cambodia, and Thailand. His paper, Music Ritual and Headhunting in Northern Design Historical Resistance, Conformity and Transformation is adopted from his ME thesis entitled Transformation, Ritual Transformations and Musical Parameters, a study of selected headhunting rites on Southern Cordillera, Northern Luzon, University of the Philippines in 18, 1989. This presentation highlights pictures and videos that were not available then. So let's welcome our last speaker for today, uh, Dr. Um, Arsenio Nicolas. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Diamboy. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at maraming salamat sa UP Archaeological Studies Program sa, pag, sa pagtanggap sa aking papel ngayong hapon ito. Nais nice, ko magpugay muna sa mga guru ko nung 1989 na siya naging aking <clears throat> uh, mga advisor sa pagtatapos ng thesis na ito, si na Professor Maceda uh, sa music, si Professor Kovar sa anthropology, si Professor Constantino sa linguistics, si Professor Rojas Lim sa art studies, at si Professor Lumbera sa literature. This study deals with the exposition of the ritual transformation and musical parameters of selected hunting, head hunting rights in southern, southern Cordillera and northern Luzon. The focus of this study is the survey of the different types of rituals involved in head hunting. The various stages of the ritual complex is described in relation to their musical parameters. In an attempt to reconstruct the head hunting ritual complex, or at least to construct what may be taken as an archaic form of head hunting. A greater portion of this study deals with citations culled from numerous sources of varying orientations. Despite the volume of published literature on the peoples of Northern Luzon, there is very little work which relates ritual and music in general and headhunting and its musical parameters in particular. The study is an attempt to clarify notions on headhunting, which are then outlined in relation to the various musical events, which mark its ritual type with headhunting motives. In this way, a typology of musical ensembles is constructed in relation to certain rituals of certain types of rituals. 
Thus, among the banquet kankana, there appears to be a division between three types of rituals with head hunting theme with a corresponding typology of musical ensembles, a phenomena which can be collaborate, corroborated by data on the Ifugao, Kalinga, Bontok, and perhaps other groups in other parts of the Philippines and Southeast Asia. My first field work was in Sadanga, Bontok. It's a village prestige feast participated by rich families in the village of Sadanga. I was uh, accompanied by Marielita Iraula, Erlinda Abad, and Jose Limayo Jr., who is from that village. And then I, that was in connection with my studies on music ensembles in Java, Bali, and Northern Luzon, and later on in Malaysia. In that time, when I was in Baguio, I was invited by Dr. Yefronio Pungayan and Dr. Sikas Pekpikan to witness an Ibaloi curing ritual in Daflan Bokod Minget. This was uh, an Ibaloi ritual to cure the sick, but, but, and held for three days and two nights to the second night falling on the full moon. The ritual is aimed at releasing the two daughters-in-law from a lingering illness. Only one mambunu or specialist officiated, but several assistants attended the, to supervise the butchering of animals preparation of offerings and the serving of food to call villagers and guests from other villages. For two nights, a big dry tree trunk had been set to fire, used to light vigil during the whole proceedings, keeping the fire lit beside the cooking space in front of the house. Distinct from the other curing rites among the Kankanai neighbors of the Ivaloi, a flat gong and drum ensemble provided music during the course of the Bat Bat, with several musicians taking turns in playing. An important preventive technique employed in this rite was the smearing of pig's blood on the foreheads of all the members of the family, including children of very young age who were carried on laps. This was done while all sat on the floor, holding on a long rope, which was tied to another live pig lying on the ground outside the house. Later, the Mambunung proceeded to the grounds and led the members of the family in dancing to the music of flat gong and drum ensemble. A hierarchy in the um, occupies from one family, dance one after the other, can be seen when it is opened by the elder married men and women, ending with the younger and married members of the family. As each group danced, the Mambunung was also performing a prayer rite as he danced alone at the foot of the stairs of the house. His lips moved as he mumbles his prayers. He danced in a quiet fashion, keeping himself to a small area at the foot of the stairs. He bent his knees and straightened them in time with the regular beats of the gongs without extending his arms as he held a small white cloth, which he waved every now and then, his eyes often staring towards the direction of the mountains opposite the valley where the ancestral spirits to whom the rite was held lived. One of the highlights of this ritual was the communal dance, Bendian, performed on the second day. Exactly as described by former writers, this was participated in by all those who were present, with the men forming one outer circle around the women and the children, dancing in a counterclockwise direction around the tree post, which was planted on the open space fronting the house of the family celebrating it. On this post were hung several items an old bronze leg man and an old spear. This Benjen was the culmination of the second day celebration. After that, the buffalo or caraba and the horse were butchered with all men carrying their own bullets participating in the cutting of the carcass. When evening came, a man fell into trance and was then possessed by the spirit of the grandfather of the man of the house. Being recognized by the wife, she knelt on the floor and listened intently to the seance called Shepo. The spirit reprimanded the family for butchering a horse for this battle. With this additional horse sacrifice, the curing rite had been transformed in a kind of a prestige feast, for the requirements of the curing rite were only chickens, several pigs, and a cattle. To appease him, the wife of the owner of the house he spoke in a soft sing-song style, sing style, offering the soul of the grandfather another pig. 
The next morning, a fig was therefore butchered, extending the celebration till noon. When I returned to Baguio City later, I consulted with Mr. Pongayan regarding the ritual, and he informed me that this was indeed the Bendian and that he was going to publish an article on this topic later in 1985. So this is a type of musical ensembles in Northern Luzon uh, that are associated with headhunting among the Kankanai, Ifugao, and the Kalinga. And you have uh, bamboo and wooden ensembles here and gong ensembles. Uh, the same here, we have bamboo and wooden, and these are gongs, these are wooden musical instruments. Among the Kalinga, you also have this is bamboo musical instruments, and of course, uh, flat gods. Headhunting as it were, had disappeared, but by being transformed, it has survived as a theme or motif by becoming part of other rituals, where, for instance, the souls of famous headhunters are invoked and where certain lineage lines are traced to former famous headhunters, thereby establishing and reinforcing the consanguinity between the living and the dead. I'm missing my cursor. The idea of a ritual transformation emerges when the, when the archaic form of headhunting is no longer practiced, although its traces or vestiges are evident in the various types of rituals surveyed here. Some early sources refer to transformation of this kind, and several other sources in the 20th century collaborated by, corroborated by field data support this view. Schadenberg, Mayer, Moss, Scherer, Egan, and my own field work in 1983. The musical parameters, referring to the various types of musical ensembles and vocal songs, transformed during these rituals in the studies of Maceda, Tamanio, and Loran, act as a parallel pivot point upon which the headhunting ritual complex may thus be reconstructed. What are these aspects of music and headhunting? The belief in the sacredness of the human head expressed in the act of headhunting and head taking by cutting it, sipping its brain, drinking its blood, mixing its blood and brain with the rice wine and drinking the mixture, the use of the skull as a wine drinking vessel, the eating of dried flesh from the head, the toes, the fingers, when strength is required for an illness, the offering to the cut head during the pre-planting and pre-harvest rites to ensure the fertility of crops and the abundance of, of the harvest. The burial of heads and skulls on the specific megalithic arenas where important village rites are held, and the offering of the cut head to village tutelary spirits residing on guardian stones. Human sacrifice may be performed to appease recalcitrant spirits who have caused bad harvest over several consecutive years by burying the corpse in lieu of a cut head in the river bed. So before I proceed, I want to show you the now. These are old pictures that are taken from many books and uh, from the internet and also from Facebook and other social media uh, <clears throat> sources. We have the uh, group dancing from the Bontok. And the caption of this picture says that Bontok men are preparing for a headhunt, but the visitor was only coming to see them. But here you can see already the spears. Uh, this is the uh, the man's house, part of the man's house, uh, as you can see, all these stones. This is a very uh, interesting picture because Kalinga man beating uh, this bamboo quill tube percussion called Patangu on the wooden shield on the way to a headhunt. Uh, these are very old pictures uh, of two musicians with flat gongs and human jaw handles. And this, uh, these are the flat gongs that are laid on the ground after playing in a ritual. Uh, 
Uh, these are the two pictures, man. This is a pole with a buffalo horn, and uh, you can see the stones here. This is a head hunting axe, head taking, head cutting rather. Uh, this is a colorized picture of a Kalinga man with children's spear. And this is a man's house made up of a raised area with stone walls where head hunting rituals are held. Another man's house, uh, cut heads are also buried here. Here we have a very rare picture of an American officer negotiating for the cessation of head hunting between two Kalinga villages. Uh, you can see the American here. And <clears throat> this is a, a kind of a, a negotiation talk. When uh, somebody dies, uh, uh, the um, corpse is seated on a chair. Uh, and this is a, a kind of paying respect. Uh, these are not, as you can see, the body is whole. Now, this is one of the most important pictures of my research. In Bontok, a head feast ritual with offering a dog, the newly cut head lies on the, on the foreground. Uh, the dog is uh, an important uh, uh, ritual sacrifice, animal sacrifice connected with head hunting, not the pig or the chicken. And here you have a Nifoga man who holds a newly cut head. And this is very interesting. Eric Kelly, a famous boxer now in uh, Bonto, holding a head ax on his right hand. And a basket of preserved cut head on his left hand. Uh, this is the body, uh, beheaded body of Anifago being carried back to his village. And this is the head feast. Uh, you see the head is uh, placed on top of a banana trunk, and that is the headless body. Again, another uh, picture of a headless, uh, of, a, of a cut head. You have spears here, and the man who is presumably the, the person who cut the head. And these are the types of head axes. As part of the fisting is a uh, people visit the house of the successful headhunter. And uh, among the Ifugao, this is very beautiful uh, uh, <clears throat> it must have been very colored for that time. And some of the uh, men at the back are holding flat guns. Now, among the Ifugao, after that, the successful head taking, uh, there's a dance. And he, if you can see this, this is the head of the, the cut head on top of a banana trunk. And uh, this is another rare picture. The man places the head on top of the trunk. And after that, he dances around the trunk. This is a man with head sculpt on top of a bamboo post, a collection. And it's uh, successful after the head taking a successful dancing among the Bontok, among the Isugao. And the Bontok uh, head feast offering a dog, a newly cut head lies in the foreground. Among the Konkanai, this is only accompanied by the wooden musical ensemble called Talak, which I will play later on. Again, I am showing this to you as an important reminder of this ritual. This is the burial of the dead among the Ifugao. Now, among the Ifugao, there is a very important uh, ritual after the, the head cutting. The village that loses the head engages in a, a burial ceremony and revenge rites. And they form this long line of uh, men carrying shields, beating on these shields. The other, uh, these are spears and shields which they carry. And the other is uh, a long line of uh, men playing the bangibang, pairs of wooden sticks. These are, these are the bangibang. 
again, you have this long line of uh, men. And this is the uh, Himung today. As you can see, there are really hundreds. The Himung on the Hifugao is both a funeral procession and a revenge rite done by hundreds of men from the village. Each one may carry wooden shields, which they beat or play the bangi bang on a pair of wooden bars. The musical instruments, the songs, and the dances, most of which have origins during the headhunting days, are celebrated today in village and city festivals and contests in northern Luzon, in the Philippines, and abroad, where the peoples of highland northern Luzon have migrated or settled. You have the Imbaya Festival in Banawe, the Iboloi Day Street Parade in Baguio, and flat gongs with human jaw handles are precious heirlooms that are played today in community feasts and street festivals. You can see the human jaw here uh, that are made as, uh, that are used as uh, flat gong handles. These are uh, uh, <clears throat> flat gongs uh, among the Natonin in Bangkok, uh, in Bontok. Now, among these, uh, 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 here, the uh, in a festival that produced in which is prepared. And playing a uh, street festival, also. but you know that before this was used in head hunting rights. And there is a trend today to play 1,000 gongs among in Sagada in Kalinda. The Ibolai, which is the focus of my topic, uh, the, of my talk, is the Ibolai Benjian was a head hunting feast in which the cut head is displayed at the center of the village, perched on top of a banana tree trunk. Dancers are participated by the villagers to the music of a flat gong and drum ensemble. With the eventual cessation of head hunting, the Benjian is held today as a commemorative ritual in memory of that head hunt. It is also sometimes a curing ritual, a dance for festive occasion during weddings. So today, this is uh, the Benjian. You see uh, uh, there's a pole here and then a tent. But there's uh, in lieu of the head, uh, you have the uh, re, uh, pig for sacrifice. And this is a flat gong ensemble. You have the, uh, the gong here called uh, gangsa, and then a pair of uh, iron bars called palas, and sulibao, the drums. This is the close up. <clears throat> now, to look back, you know, we have this headless body on the left foreground, it's still wrapped in a mat, and the newly cut head is placed on top of a banana trunk. And today, this is still done among the Ibolo. Now, what is interesting in this picture is, uh, as you can see here, this is the tr banana trunk, but instead of a head, this is a rice wine jar, and a newly cut uh, uh, pork. Uh, is offered. If I have still have time, I'd like to show you some of the videos. Did you see that? That is the cut head. Okay. But of course, this is now just a uh, doll, but uh, this is the Bendian. <laughs> And again, you have this uh, 
different concentric circles, uh, most of the dancers are women. But later on, we'll join them. The circle becomes bigger, and the men have joined them. Here you have the head. All right, the second video that I would like to show you is the wooden ensemble called Tarlap, uh, which was used in the head hunting ritual among the uh, after the uh, uh, head hunting ritual, the offering of the dogs. Uh, but here, what you see now are performances by young children. a detailed recording and later on they will play as an ensemble. This is the whole ensemble now. Last video that I will show you is uh, a burial rite of an Ifugao a military man who was killed in a in Sulu. This was in 2014. This is Bangiban. The men prepare for the procession. And at the cemetery, uh, this is an oratory eulogy. Brother Robert, and then there's a Catholic ritual. And whoever believes in me, the all the faithful departed. And one more. And uh, that ends my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Arsenio. So again, thank you, Sir Pino, Sir Magpantay, and Dr. Arsenio para sa mga uh, magagandang papel. Ngayon po ay dadako tayo sa open forum na...
naipo na po namin yung mga questions. So kung may mga habol po kayo, let me know po. So una po, ay ang unang katanungan para sa session na to ay para po kay Sir Arvin Tingol. So ang katanungan po ay mula sa Zoom, mula po kay Mr. Ramon De Leon. Ang kanya pong katanungan ay, gusto ko lang po itanong sa so unang speaker, ano po ba ang kanyang mga naging sources of information para magawa ang isang study tungkol sa mga naging aklasan? Salamat po, Sir Arvin. Ah, uh, yung tungkol po doon sa mga sources na ginamit, usually ay makikita lahat 'yan sa Blaren Robertson, no, yung doon sa Volume 38 which is yung Insurrections of the Filipinos in the 17th Century. Ah, uh, pero ito pong mga sources na ito sa Blaren Robertson ay makikita rin o uh, galing din doon sa iba't ibang mga historia sa kronikas na isinulat ng mga fraile, no, particular si na Fray Duarte. Fray Murillo Bilarde, Fray Juan Ferrando, Fray Baltasar de Santa Cruz, Casimiro Diaz, at si Fray Vicente Salazar. So, doon din po galing yan. Makikita lahat yan sa Blair and Robertson. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Arvin. So, sunod po ay para kay Sir Andre Magpantay. Ito po ay anonymous question. So, regarding sa amulet and anting-anting, ano ang agimat at ano sa atin ang sigil? Sigil. Apo, sigil. Sigil po yung huli. Apo, sigil, sir. Uh, ano? Ayun pa. Uh, dinig yung sigil. Pero yung sa agimat, uh, iba ang agimat, nagkaroon ng distinction ng agimat versus anting-anting. Yung anting-anting, sabi nila nagsisimula ito na pangontra. Well, yung agimat ay marami tayong different sources na, na pinagkukunan. Gaya nung halimbawa yung sa... Bawa nung, uh, well, ito yung tales no, sa Batangas na kahit yung uh, parang kaldero, minsan may lumalabas doon na uh, parang maliit na bagay. Pwede yung kunin. And marami pang, according sa different literatures na uh, pinakukunan ng, anting, ng agimat. Pero yung anting-anting, ang common doon is ito yung pangontra sa maraming bagay. Yung sigil, hindi ko ito narinig sa... Sigil, sigil daw, sir. Sigil daw po pag pwede na lang. Sigil. Ah, sigil po. Sigil, opo. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> ah, okay po. Ang sigil ay, ah, ang asa ah, atin meron tayo. Pero ang tawag lang natin sa sigil ay, according nga, ito yung sinusot yung makaryo sa akin din na, sa likod o mga, sa mga panyo, yung mga symbolisms. At ito ay sa atin hindi ko to nasama sa study mismo pero uh, ito yung mga imagery din ng halimbawa nga may may all seeing eye ilalagay siya sa panyo and nagse-serve siya as anting-anting ayun yung sigil na ginagamit thank you sir ang next question pa natin ay para kay Dr. Arsenio so ang question po sir ay mula po kay Ruben Kim kay Kim Reyes po Uh, mula sa Zoom, among the cultures presented, do they attribute specific instrument materials to specific events and practices? It was briefly discussed in one of the slides. Example, um, instrument made the food associated with that. Follow up niya po, sir. Might they regard the material as more significant uh, than the organology of the instrument? Medyo interested po ito kasi si Kim sa music archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> Medyo mahaba ang sagot dyan. Uh, well, talagang hindi naman talaga stricto ang pagkabahabahagi ng, ng paggamit. Pero yung mga magbuhat sa kawayan, sa kahoy, hanggang maging tanso o bronze, eh, talagang historical din yan. Kasi nung una, wala naman tayong, wala naman tayong tanso. Walang, wala pang mga gangsa dito sa Pilipinas. Eh, nung unang panahon, kawayan lang at saka, ka, kawayan at saka kahoy lang gamit. Galing sa kalikasan. So, yung mga naunang ritual noon, ang gamit lang ay kawayan at saka uh, kahoy. Ngayon, pagdating ng mga gongs, <laughs> isa pang usapin yan, kung kailan dumating ang mga gangsa sa Pilipinas, sa aking pananaliksik, uh, about the 10th century, meron na. 
na mga gangsa sa Borneo. So, ibig sabihin, kung meron sa Borneo, talaga kung meron din sa Luzon. Kaya lang wala tayong archaeological record. But yung 10th century, ay may shipwreck sa Tanjung Simpang, sa Tanjung Simpang sa on the east coast of Saba. Uh, galing sa China yung mga flat longs na yun. So, magbuhat nun, uh, at nung 16th century na, uh, lumabas ng mga salitang gangsa sa sa mga ulat ng mga Espanyol, sa mga diksyonaryo. Talaga ko yun lang ang masasabi ko dahil ahaba talaga yun. Mahabang istorya. Mga ako, kamusta yun po kayo ni Kim, Dr. Arsenio? <laughs> okay po. Yung sunod po nating katanungan ay para po kay Sir Andre Magpantay. Ito po ay mula din sa, sa FB naman po. Okay? Si Mana sa Facebook po dyan, wag po tayong mahiyang magtanong. Umaabot po sa amin ang inyong mga katanungan. So it, um, ito po ay mula kay Mr. Benedict Oseo. So ang question niya po, Sir Andre, ay how was it, it able to happen that after the revolt in 16th century, which they profaned the Catholicism and their figurines, the people were able to make festivals for the Catholicism which concerns the Lord and the other practices of the said religion. Okay. Uh, it's an interesting question kasi yung sa studies, medyo malawak yung pinagkukunan natin. And uh, according to isang literature, uh, Iba kasi yung naging reactions in different locations, geographical locations. And supposedly, um, some festivals were uh, continuous siya. Eh. Hindi na uh, completely embrace yung um, for Catholicism and practice. While other festivals naman were supposedly uh, remade. Kumbaga, gaya nung... Ano ba yun? Uh, I think that's the sinulog yung and then the pahiyas the pahiyas was actually uh, a different concept pero binigyan siya ng meaning after uh, i think it's already in the 1980s the 1640s not pero siguro the the answer would is actually really hard to answer that question kung bakit nagcontinue yung festivals pero most of them nagkaroon ng different evolutions and modern interpretations well yung iba doon is uh, a practice differently before and binigyan siya ng ano in order to promote tourism may mga issue rin ako napansin na yung tourism so i hope i have answered it a little bit thank you sir so medyo marami pong sunod-sunod na questions para kay sir um Andre at kay Dr. Arsenio so the next question po natin again ay um, mula kay um Kay the Dr. Mix Canelao. So ito po ay mula sa Zoom para kay Dr. Arsenio. So yung question pa ni Sir Mix ay um remember great talk Dr. Uh, Dr. Sen excellent um imagery as well. In Dr. William Jones ill-fated fieldwork among the Ilongots in the turn of the 20th 20th century, he notes that a group of eager Ilongot youth departed uh, for a headhunting expedition in other villages as consequence of the typhoon ravaging the Sierra Madre, destroying villages and balsas. Is the headhunt related to an ordering mechanism vis-a-vis -vis nature? Uh, Is the headhunt related to an ordering mechanism vis-a-vis -vis nature? Related to, sorry? Uh, ordering mechanism, sir, or vis-a-vis -vis nature? Nature. <laughs> medyo, medyo ma, ang reception, hindi maganda. I sir. Sir? Uh, medyo clear na pa? If I may interrupt. Uh, okay. Perhaps we can call on uh, Dr. Canilao to clarify the uh, question yeah. himself. Hey, sir, needs. Hi, uh, hello, hello, hello. Hi, Shia, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Doc uh, Sen, just uh, asking, siguro po, parang sa rites of passage, kasi sir, di ba kung merong oh. mga ordering uh, rituals, would you say na headhunting ay uh, uh, parang ganun po, sir? Thank ay, you, yeah, sir. Meron, uh, hindi ko nabanggit yun, kasi uh, ang isa pa ay pagka uh, 
uh, gusto mong mag-asawa at hindi lang sa Northern Luzon pati sa Borneo ganun din mamumukuha ka ng ulo para dun sa mapapangasawa mo so that's part of the uh, life cycle and then of course uh, if you cut ahead uh, you become like a, a, an accepted person uh, a brave man and then after that you are entitled to have the tattoo, which is still very prevalent uh, in recent times. So it's a, it's a rite of passage. Okay? It's a very nice question. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Migs. Next question po ay para kay Sir Andre Magpantay, mula po ulit kay Kim. Um, might you have data regarding where the brass or anything and being are manufactured or the people who make them? Okay po. Uh, Actually, I read din pala dun sa minagsabi na agdima at anything and thing as equal. I was talking about, uh, a while ago pala with the differences on how people here in Calabar Zone or Batangas differ, defines them uh, separately. They think that agdima at anything and thing are two different entities. Uh, but yes, regarding that question, uh, I actually got to talk to one then who was selling. And here's actually one sample of the brass agdima or anything and thing. And this is actually manufactured in, according to one, which is from Calacao, which is, uh, it's manufactured daw sa Paete, Laguna, uh, alongside the other images of saints. And there are also uh, ones that are created near Mount Banahaw. Kasi yung tinatawag nila na tunay or legit na anting-anting ay uh, dinala sa Mount Banahaw para pagdasalan bago ibaba. So yun yung, yung sinasabi ng mga nagtitinda. Although I haven't actually gone to dun sa, sa saan siya minamanufacture. Ang napuntahan ko lang is ito naman siya. Uh, this is made from Anubing. It's made from Batangas, Alitagtag. And it's the image of the Holy Cross. So maraming nagmamanufacture ng anting-anting in different parts. And common siya around the areas near Mount Banahaw especially uh, Quezon and, and Laguna and also in Cavite and Batangas. Ayun, ayun lang yung data. Thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Sen, from Zoom, ang question po ay galing kay Ma'am Luz Pinton. Doc, to Dr. Sen, meron bang sequence and music ritual? Example po, we are or all the way isa lang ang tunog na music ritual. Uh, wala, wala tayong masyadong uh, sa aking panalilikstik. Uh, it was very difficult to get the real sequence of uh, the headhunt. I mean, from the reports of the early ethnographers. So what I have are reconstructions uh, for the preparation from another group. From the, nobody, no ethnographer has actually seen the actual head cutting. So Walata Yung record none. But according to the anthropologist June uh, Brit Prill, uh, in her dissertation, she said that one of them might have seen it based on the description, but they never write about it. They never wrote about it. So uh, it's a problem of uh, collating all the materials and uh, making a chronology of the steps of the head hunting ritual. I call it a ritual, not just an event, because along, along all these uh, steps, there are certain rituals that are observed from the preparation up to the feast. And what do you do with the head? You know? Because it's, it is offered to the rice spirits, it's offered to the ancestors. It's, it's a totally different world, you know? It's, it, it, it's a totally different uh, world of thinking of our ancestors. Biro mo sa Tagalog, may salita yung pugot, no? So ibig sabihin ng una, the Tagalogs were head hunters. But there is no record. I have not read it yet, but probably <laughs> I would ask our friends here to again, look at Blair and Robertson, if uh, there is a Tagalog account 
uh, an account on Beto Garlo, that the Garlo's are head takers and head hunters. Dahil meron tayong salitang pugot. Salamat po. Thank you, sir. Okay, next question po. Ayan, para kay Sir Andre magpantay po. Um, mula po ito sa Zoom, di po nagpakilaling ng question, pero ang tanong po niya, part rin ba ng po Catholicism ang pagpupunas at paghahawak uh, sa mga santo, pati na rin ang pag-sign of the cross pag napadaan sa mga sementeryo o simbahan? Uh, yung huli, I, I'm not particularly sure dun sa pag-sign of the cross, but Um, suggested dun sa literature na prinestan kanina na part siya ng pocatholicism, especially since hindi ito practice originally in in the Catholic faith na yung pagpupunas or yung uh, sa santo. But meron version nito ng sa Catholic faith mismo, yung tinatawag na, nakalimutan ko yun. Uh, ano ba ta? Uh, meron siya. in ano na pag di ba yung pinunas ng uh, I forgot the term I'm really sorry sa but meron sa Catholic faith na kasama pero yung mismong devotion ng Filipinos with regards sa mga santo ng mga paghawak at pupunas it's part of po Catholicism pero yung tinatawag na relics I'm sorry relics yung term relic siya sa tinatawag sa original Catholic faith especially those of the bodies of the dead saints. And pag nalimbawa yung panyunga na naipunas sa isang relic, uh, ito ay magsaserve as another uh, relic na rin. Pero yung sa mismong imageries, iba yung, uh, it, this is part of Catholicism, especially since iba yung trato sa mga imageries, especially since uh, compared to sa Vatican, compared to sa Philippines. And maraming priests ang nakapansin ito. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question po from Facebook Live again para po kay uh, Dr. Arsenio from Benedict Oseo. Um, are there people or a group of people who tried to stop or correct or contradict the practices of the said indigenous tribes? How did those indigenous tribes respond if ever there are contradictions from them? Mostly the handling, uh, head hunting or head cutting practice po. Um. It's a very complex process because the, um, some of the uh, what paper this morning talked about how eventually the people in the Cagayan were converted to Christianity. And uh, <clears throat> uh, at the first there was really resistance and rebellion. And some of them went up to the mountains. And uh, the, this, this connects to the study of uh, Stephen Acabado that uh, the Ifugas were also formerly lowlanders and then they migrated to the mountains to escape Spanish uh, 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 colonial intrusions. Uh, eventually, uh, the process over these 300 years, 400 years is very slow. And <clears throat> first there is resistance, there is rebellion, and then this, The, the Spaniards must have learned from Mexico at the same time how to colonize people in terms of how religion is used to colonize people. So they started uh, courting village chiefs, that kind of uh, negotiation and strategy. And then eventually uh, the native chief can also convince the people. Uh, this kind of change is not only in the Philippines, it's also in Southeast Asia, because the kings, uh, before Hinduism and Buddhism came and Islam, we had, all of us had indigenous uh, political systems and religions. But then when all these religions came, uh, the kings acqui um, acquired titles from India. And eventually uh, Hinduism and Buddhism or Buddhism became the state religion. It is the same process uh, as in, in Northern Luzon and in the whole Philippines, especially. And these are very different complex uh, cultural, social, and political and religious changes, which uh, have not been really written about. And I think our papers in this conference are a contribution to all these 
uh, it's, it's very interesting, you know, if you, if you can expand the topic to all these and uh, make a, a really concerted, <clears throat> concerted study on how religious change uh, occurred in the Philippines in terms of political organization, economics, cultural change, and of course, music in my, in my field. And uh, the, ano bang sinasabi natin sa Tagalog? In English, there is a term. <laughs> when you appoint somebody and uh, parang agent mo, okay? <laughs> agent to uh, convince people to join you. So ganun din ang ginawa ng mga Espanyol, you know? Pina, binigyan ng uh, regalo, bahay, pagkatapos, eh, yan, pagkatapos sabihin nila, o oh, sige, sabihin mo mga, uh, mga kasamahan mo dito na, pumunta kayo sa simbahan. So in the span of 400 years, that was all, you know, conditioning. Pagkatapos dumating ang mga Amerikano, mas lalo pa. Kasi ano na, anong, anong, anong kanilang pain? English language. Kaya tayo magagaling ng English. <laughs> well, that is a long, that's a long explanation, but that's how I see uh, how headhunting stopped in Northern Luzon. It was over time. And today, you know, in, in the video that I showed you, in the burial of that, um, of that military officer, uh, you have the Ifugao ritual and then the Catholic uh, priest uh, officiating at the same time. So this is a transformation or uh, a mixture of, 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 these two, of these two systems. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir, B. Meron pa kayong gustong idagdag or itanong? Thank you, Shireen. Um, yeah, may mga comments ako, pati questions for for, for great um, speakers no, for this afternoon. Uh, of course, let's, let's start with Arsenio, no? um, whose uh, research is always uh, very rich and um, has gone for decades. Um, I was just thinking, I um, in Bandian ritual. Ben, so, ben, ben uh, ben Dian. Okay. I um okay um. Parang ano no? Yung, one if I you correct me if I'm I'm wrong in my impression. You are saying because now there's no more head hunting, it seems uh, they have um, shifted the ritual into other um to um um. To celebrate or to commemorate something else, right? Um, but could it be that in the past, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, inside uh, with head hunting, you already have these other meanings for or uses for this ritual. What, what's your view on that? Could uh, could that uh, did you encounter that by any chance? In other oh, words, man. the rituals are not very specific mm -hmm. uh, in the in the in the first place. No? Uh, any any of these rituals. They, they are very um, flexible <laughs> to cover so, many things. Huh? Our, our knowledge of this um, is based uh, primarily on early American ethnography. Yeah. Barton, uh, which Jenks, I quote, and yeah. uh, Jenks, uh, Lambrecht also, very good, mm. very good source of this, which I did not yeah. uh, mention, but in my, in my thesis it is there. Uh, so this is the problem of handling these materials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you interpret? Yeah. Because the, most of the time uh, in the ethnographies, it's very, it's very structured, no? Yes, yes. So sa nila, ritual for X, for Y, ganyan, or activity for X, and then mm -hmm. sometimes baka nawawala lang dun, you know? Uh, so Which it's, takes it's, me... It's, uh, it's, it's uh, a matter of interpretation now. Uh, maganda yung picture mo, and I think that's quite rare, and I was taken aback, that the um, mandible gong handles mm -hmm. are still within the possession of yes. families after yes. all the pressures of uh, for them to sell was, and, and I everything. I was surprised to see that picture. Vicky. Yes. Uh, so, but, <laughs> but do you still agree that all of these mandible uh, gong handles, uh, you've heard of this story before, um, it was during the war, the Second ah, World War, yes. and they had a harvest, a bumper harvest of heads, no? 
Uh, yeah, they could be and, Japanese also. Yes. So because I was thinking, the older ones must have, must have already been surrendered or, or sold or, or, or given away. I mean, the turn of the century until the 1940s. No? But after the war, you know, they, then all of a sudden. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we're seeing now, like that picture, the mandible in that picture yeah. must have been a Japanese soldier <laughs> or something. Uh, you agree uh, with that? You, you agree with that? I, I did not. I did not make any caution that uh, we need more fieldwork and more. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, to validate the data, because uh, these are. Uh, uh, I'm not in the Philippines now, and we cannot do field work in the northern Luzon at the moment. So, uh, this is what we can we can only do at the moment. Definitely. But, but what I'm glad about with my presentation is, as I've said in my thesis, there were no pictures. That was in 1989. And over the years, I collected all these pictures and videos, yeah. which are related to the, uh, yeah. to the thesis. So I'm happy that I'm able to share it uh, with you today. I like that video with the ritual of the burial of the mm -hmm. soldier. And they all created their old classical yes. headbands with cordyline leaves. But if you notice, if you notice, they're not prop. They're um, they're expedient ones. <laughs> the, the young man had a cardboard <laughs> from, from a cigarette cardboard or chocolate cardboard <laughs> headgear with the cord. So you yes, the unang thing na kalamo wow no. But in there, it was all expedient. Huh? Yes, yes. And the gong, I think, uh, I just had a very quick look at the Austronesian Dictionary List of Blas. Ay, ano pala, no? It's uh, Western Malay Polynesian, Agung. Uh, so it's quite old. But syempre, ibang usapin, if as early as 4,000 or 3,000 years ago, it was already around. No? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is we've never seen an example in the islands of uh, gongs being made into uh, burial furniture. And so there uh, no no there is a reference by Bayer that they was included in the uh, in the burial yes uh, if you oh. consult his um, if you consult his book it's uh, 1947 book. yeah yeah I, I will I will send you the uh, reference. oh that would be interesting no my, my, my uh, thinking it is, it is in Sambuanga and it ah. is, oh. it is uh, it is uh, on top of a burial jar a secondary burial jar. Fantastic! So I didn't know so, that. Uh, uh, um, I will send you the uh, hmm. the the page itself. And the the full creation of a head is also fascinating. Oh, what is it telling is, uh, us uh, now? <laughs> oh, is this like are they uh, romanticizing or is there? No, a, no, 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 no. It is a, not. A, a, why I is there a revival of my, representing the head? Yeah, it is a revival, but the thing is this. As I was saying in in the pictures, although these instruments are played in street festivals and in contests now, the origins of these instruments are from the past, mm. part of the head hunting rituals yeah. and other secular rituals other than head hunting. Okay. So it is not romanticizing. It's really it's really commemorative. It's yeah. still in the consciousness of the people. All right. Good. Shireen, I have questions for Arvin and Andre, but uh, let others ask first or comment first. If there are other questions, po, may question po ako dito para kay Sir Arvin eh. Tas pwede niyo po siguro Sir Sunod yung question niyo, baka related dito. Dalawa po yung questions kay Sir Arvin, pag-iisahin ko na lang po. So una po, galing po ito sa Zoom kay Sir Ramon De Leon. Sir Arvin, meron po ba kayong naging study kung nagkaroon ng aklasan dito sa Cavite or puerto nung mga 16th at 17th century? Salamat po. Tas yung isa mong question Sir Arvin ay, eto naman ay anonymous. Wait lang. Pag-isahin ko na. Uh, Sir Pingo, uh, was there evidence of celebration of the Filipinos after their raids? Or, the, uh, or do they retreat and plan for another raid right after a successful one? So, yun yung mga questions mo na niiwan, sir. Okay. Uh, yung unang tanong uh, doon sa Cavite Puerto itself, no, kung merong mga klasang bayan doon, wala pa akong nakita. No? Uh, pero... Uh, we'll never know no kung may ma masumpong ang mga bagong data pero tungkol doon sa 17th century uh, insurrections wala pa 
uh, doon sa pangalawang tanong ay uh, kung nagse-celebrate ba sila, uh, walang record kasi uh, after the raid no na ginagawa doon sa mga uh, uh, simbahan no sa mga prayle usually pumupunta na sila doon sa kanilang mga ilihan sa kanilang mga kuta sa kabundukan kasi uh, ang 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 tansya ko ay they plan for another surprise attack no doon sa mga susunod na sasalakayan nila pero uh, probably merong mga celebrations na ganyan ang ang malinaw lang doon sa pagkamatay doon sa isang prayle sa sa Playa Honda sa ng mga ng, ng pagkapatay ng mga sambal diyan ay mas masaya sila nung namatay yung ano habang nandoon sila sa uh, nandoon sila sa burol nung pare ay mas masaya sila hindi sila malungkot nung namatay yung pare kundi mas masaya sila doon sa sa pagkamatay ng pare na yun. kasi makakabalik na raw sila doon sa kanilang uh, dating gawi no, nung nung pag-aanito yun po Thank you, sir, na ihabol. Ito pa medyo curious din po ako dito para kay Sir uh, Andre Magpantay. So, um, hindi po ako nagtanong pero naisip ko din po sanang i-question. So, yung pag-recharge po ba yung nang anting-anting sa bundok ay kapareho ba ng pag-bless yung idea na ng mga Catholic sa object sa simbahan o mas lumang practice pa ito? Uh, sige po. Uh, actually, marami rin tanong regarding dun sa recharging ng anting-anting dun sa chat. Ah, sige, uh, bigyan na lang natin ng konti. Ah, uh, yung culture ng anting-anting draws um uh, matagal na siya. Uh, before Catholic faith, pero nagkaroon ng certain changes dun sa so-called recharging since for example nga tinaon siya do sa Good Friday. And then when I ask people about bakit Good Friday yung ginagawa, dalawa yung nagiging answer and super ironic. Yung isa is Good Friday since it's a holy time. No, holy in the sense of uh, sacred sa Catholic Church. On the other hand, na-mention din ito ni Ma'am Rosella M. Toracampo na uh, lumalabas daw yung maligno, ang engkanto, dun sa Biyernes Santo after 3 p.m. when Jesus is uh, dead daw. So, medyo conflicting yung accounts. Whether saan ba nagdodraw ng power yung anting-anting, which from ito ba from the Catholic Church, Faith, kung kasama nga siya parang blessed nga ba or doon siya sa kalaban ng Catholic faith since uh, sinasabing mga inkanto and uh, to answer if same siya doon sa blessing it's different dahil ang blessing ng saints usually ay ibang ritual ito sa Catholic Catholicism like ito yung mismong uh, tinatawag na exorcism tinatanggal yung negative uh, elements sa isang bagay na sacramental compare natin sa anting-anting natin. And siguro i-mention ko na lang din, although natakal siya dito sa chat, na it's all about to sa panata. Panata na tinatawag kung paano mo i-maintain yung so-called powers ng anting-anting. Kung kaya siya so-called nire-recharge. So, kumbaga, kung merong isang anting-anting, meron kang panata or pangako dun sa anting-anting na pupunta mo siya dun sa holy site kung saan siya nagkaroon ng so-called powers and you maintain it supposedly every year. At minsan napaka-personal ng mga panatas anting-anting and with the so-called recharging. Yun po. Thank you po. Thank you, sir. Sir, Dr. Arsenio, ito po. Um, last na po. Pa, uh, from Zoom, medyo marami pa po silang binabatong tanong pero um, isisingit ko po itong isa. So, from uh, Mr. Jose Taton Jr., He mong kung tama pa yung pagkakapronounce ko, is an interesting epogal practice related to this. Can you comment on the transformation of the tradition in its symbolic, ritual, and sonic aspect considering that revenge dances are becoming quite less common or as these are transformed into commemorative performances um, in the festival like Imba Imbaya? Like the Imbaya. Is that question for whom? Um, Jose Taton Jr. po, from Zoom. Para sir sa Tata. ako? Apo, sir, para sa inyo po. <laughs> himong, yung himong practice daw po, sir. Sa himong, oo. Oh, yes. Apo, the himong practice. The, 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 uh, the transformation. Kung pwede daw po kayo mag-comment sa transformation uh, dun sa tradisyon and, and in symbolic, sa ritual and sonic aspect po na ito. About dun sa dance. Um. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not very much informed with um, mm -hmm. on this ritual. I just know it from the pictures and from the literature. So I cannot 
um, I cannot uh, give a, a very full description of this. Thank you. Yes, sir. We... Arvin, yung, uh, yung pagkapatay kay Fry Domingo, ito ba yung nabasa ko nga na pini, uh, na you may may, tree, may may grove of trees kung nasaan nandun yung kanyang yung mga anito o yung mga pinag, yung sinasamba ng mga tao tapos yun ang, yun ang gusto niyang pasira o sinira niya. Kaya later on, pinatay siya. Is, is this is the same thing? Do you, yung mga recollection mo sa pagbasa mo ng Blair? Uh, mukhang hindi sir, mukhang ito yung sa Bulinaw accounts na makikita doon sa mga studies na ginawa nila Brewer. Mm. Mm. Pero itong nangyari, around 1865 onwards yung mga pangyayaring ito. Pero yung nangyari dito sa uh, sa Sambal, sa Playa Honda is in 18, uh, uh, 1663. Yes. Uh, yun, And then yung nabasa ko matanda rin eh. 17th century rin eh. But, anyway, um, lahat ba ng revolts nito or pag-salakay uh, ay may kasamang ritual specialist? Halimbawa, Babaylan, Mumbaki or or uh, mm. talona or minsan wala yung ibang mga pananalakay po wala silang mga kasamang uh, tawag dito mga babaylan pero most of them lalo na dito sa may bandang Visayas area may mga kasama talaga silang yeah, babaylan sila, other other uh, revolts ay ang namamahala yung mga chiefs ng kanilang villages which in uh, uh, relation with this ay uh, dating ano o oh, sila rin yung yung chief village ay sharing namumuno doon sa mga ritual o doon sa mga uh, pag-aan nito na ginagawa. Ting ting oh, pwedeng mong tingnan yung ethnography ni Fay Cooper Cole at yung babae na 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 maga one of the early American ethnographers uh, among the Subanon and si Shannon Berg yata no uh, senior okay. sa where no nangongolekta sila no nang ulekta sila ng mga bulol ganyan ano no ay hindi sila kakaproblema na makabili ang gagawin lang ng tao ay ika nga dinidecommission no dinidecommission yung mga ay yung mga image yung mga icons yung mga idols no? so pag dinidecommission na sige betin pwede lang nila benta so may problema lang ko hindi now na naisip ko lang yung yung mga accounts na sinear mo ay ang dali-dali sa mentality ng mga nag-revolt na sirain lahat yan, yung crucifix, yung mga santo. Kasi maybe in their minds, these are just images that are no more. I mean, they, they might be, have been powerful, they respect, but they, uh, they've decommissioned them. No? Parang gano'n ang thinking. So something to look into para i-ano mo pa, no? yung, yung why is it so easy for them to destroy images so just like you were born again late in the 20th century na nagsusunog ng mga santo no uh, in one moment they can just do that too um, so it's an interesting uh, phenomena I, I will say in, la in my last comments for for uh, andre uh, the mapapansin mo andre if you find older uh, purchase of anting anting sa kiapo the workmanship is better so lately i noticed na mababaw na so manipis. ang ang, ang manip, at manipis mm -hmm. so ang view ko dyan i either uh, it's really a dying kind of industry and no one is making new molds you see the problem with molds if you make too much uh, copies then lumini piece of bumab nagigi masyalo no hindi hindi na siya masyadong sharp so uh, it must it might be a really a dying kind of uh, industry now and then um yung uh, i was wondering wh why did you put the ah uh, the folk catholicism category or definition is problematic i think and they maybe kailangan mag-isip ka ng ibang kaning mong damitin uh, given that anything that is uh, as if uh, uh, appropriated by a culture of it becomes a folk no and one can argue that the iberian uh, catholicism is folk or even um, 
anything outside um, uh, the heart of Catholicism, no? uh, Italy would be folk. And then it it shall it uh, it pro it becomes problematic no? to use it mm -hmm. unless it is in the classic case of the other ring of Western co colonial culture and then resistance of local colonized. But maybe hindi na yun ang gusto mong gawin na framework, no? So ginagawa mo sing uh, synchronization of uh, of of Catholicism and its uh, ex expressions. So my my last question for you is why why did you put um, in your presentation the Obando Fertility uh, Festival uh, in a different category to your because you about festivals huh? and then you talked about um, imageries and then then you went back to talk about the Obando yeah. was that deliberate or uh, why is it in a different category? Uh, I actually supposedly. I would actually place it sa festival po, but uh, I I categorized it when I was writing yung part na yun as the practice by itself. Since uh -huh. I think uh, it as uh, no. nakulam nakulam si I like it for the, if I could go to the festival. <laughs> Yes. Medyo na nakakabuo ko na. Ay. Kailangan niyo po mag-charge sir. Joke lang po. Okay na po ba ngayon? Okay na ako noon. Ah, hindi po hindi rin po kasi gumagalaw yung video. But I got your answer. Thank you very much for the clarification. I actually wanted to um comment some something na. Sir, talagang detailed yung agi anting anting na gimat uh, one insight na nakuha namin is para kasi commercialized na siya sir in such a way na talagang mass produced and hindi siya naka center on quality yung yung more recent na makikita ang anting anting na gi hmm. binebenta sa mga but the, you, you see Andre mass produced na siya nung araw pa no kahit nung bata pa uh, no simula pa nung way way back it's mass produced in Quiapo but you mm -hmm. you will see really um and that's so, so ako ang, ang reading ko lang diyan nung araw they will just change them they will create a new mold no and then so you have a sharper image of the product but uh if you if, if you've been using the same mold again and again and again right for uh, a thousand copies or two thousand copies wala na no Ma, so uh, bakit kaya bakit hindi na marunong gumawa ng mold Maganda pag-aralan nga sa maganda nga pag-aralan. May may tanong ako kay Andre. Uh, uh, Andre, pag bumili ka ng anting-anting, yung ba ay merong visa na o kailangan ka pumunta sa simbahan o kung saan man o pupunta ka sa isang tao para sabihin ano, ah, kasi yung sa Indonesia, uh, sa Bali, may mga objects na katulad ng maskara yung ginagamit sa mask dance pagkatapos na maukit at pinintahan wala pa yung wala pang laman kaya merong seremonya para lamnan ganun din ba ang mga anting-anting sa atin? Uh, bali sir dalawang accounts yun <laughs> pwede ko sabihin yung one account sir is ganun din siya kapareho lang din po na kailangan siyang dalahin at uh, tapos sa isang sacred place and then magkaroon ng panata ah. in order to maintain yung powers pero uh, kung tinanong ko yung mga nagtitinda sabi nila meron na daw itong visa <laughs> or they might say that just to sell the oh, kasi hindi mo alam kung saan ka pupunta eh kaya eh, ako eh, gusto yes, kong bumili po. pero baka meron ng laman eh baka may visa na <laughs> hindi ko alam kung ano yung visa no <laughs> yun yun <laughs> Pero interesting sir kasi usually yung mga anting-anting nila sinasabi with the images of uh, Catholicism uh, meron siyang specific meaning like ito yung hawa ko is ito sabi niya perpetual health siya so it's for healing so according sa kanila yung mga may ano po mga related sa Catholicism has its own powers na kumbaga kumbaga may bisa na daw yun 
Pero yung mga triangles and uh, all seeing, oh, it's yeah. a little bit different in nature. Uh, Andrea, I'm sure you've read it, but uh, maybe not. Um, si uh, Badet Abrera did the mass masters no? on uh, anting-anting and created a typology uh, of anting-anting types. No? So natural, yung metal, ganyan, yung folk, uh, may folk Latin. Um, so, uh, hindi, hindi lang na-publish eh, pero I'm sure she, she'll give you a copy if you ask her. <laughs> okay. okay po. I will ask you That'd be very helpful po. Pumunta ka sa dito sa Thailand. Maraming anting-anting dito. <laughs> Para ho rin sa atin. May mga humahabot pa po tong questions eh. Um, Sir Andre, yung anting-anting daw po ba ay gender sensitive or patriarchal in general? Galing po sa Zoom. Uh, uh, usually, wala siyang... I, I, I was actually thinking wala siyang ganong concept na uh, gender. I, I, I don't know if iba but supposedly none oh yung love wala, potion wala. hindi naman eh di ba yung yung pang yung di ba yung love uh, amulet potion hindi, hindi naman gender no Tama. yes po yes um uh dr arsenio may questions po dito um are there also mentions or account that uh link taking uh, of heads and keeping the skulls or a spirit vessel similar to Kadazan in Murut groups in Borneo from uh, Mr. Jose Taton Jr. I don't know the answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Medyo kailangan magbasa pa. <laughs> Explore. Um, ito po. Um, how did the headhunters choose where to hunt? Did it, the taking of heads from one village to another escalate into tribal uh, tribal wars? Ah, yes. It's... it's uh... This, this concerns many aspects of uh, inter-village relations. And this, this affects uh, uh, marriage rights, one, uh, rights agriculture, uh, land rights also. Uh, so it is uh, usually the villagers, uh, they are far away villages. So it's... Uh, for, for safety reason. And you cannot attack your the nearby village because it will be very it will be very dangerous for both villages. It's going to be a warfare between the two. So the tendency is for for one person or one group of persons to go to a faraway village. But there are many reasons behind it. There are many reasons. But what is interesting is the after that, uh, what I failed to uh, <clears throat> to explain was the peace pack system. How do two villagers uh, come together to establish peace? And it's very complex. It's it's known among the Kalinga and the Bonto, but there's an, uh, there are many where well, there are several dissertations on this, Pakdayan and. Uh, Oh, Maganon, yes, uh, Steve Maganon has written about this. Uh, but in other, in other groups, uh, we don't have records of the peace pack uh, system, although there should be how you cannot go on hostility for, for um, years. No? There has to be a system of, uh, of uh, negotiation and uh, talking together. But the Kalinga system of uh, Bodong it's very interesting because it's done by music. Oh. It's done by music. So when when the uh, in when the invited party comes to the village, they play bamboo musical instruments to announce their arrival. And then when they are already in that, uh, when they are received, of course there is food. And then there's dancing, gong playing, and then there is this uh, singing of songs, extolling people or the negotiation are also uh, some of the, I've forgotten the terms of it. There are many songs related to this peace pact uh, negotiations. So it is very, it's another study. Uh, there are already published literature on this. May comment po dito si Dr. Zach Medrana. Um, about po sa anting-anting. Actually, ganito rin po yung 
na ipasa sa amin ng mga kwento nung lumalaki po ako. Yung anting-anting po kasi sa amin ay idea po niya ay ipinapamana po siya sa, sa susunod. Um, yung story po is from sa province po ng mama ko is sa Aklan. Pero iba po yung anting-anting doon. Kasi yung power po niya ay related sa concept po ng aswang. Parang ganoon na yung person na may hawak ng anting-anting, uh, hindi po siya mamamatay hanggat hindi pa po niya maipapasa yung anting-anting na next aswang doon sa relative niya. So yung comment po ni Sir Jack Medana dito is the anting-anting has to be given by someone madalas by a ritual specialist, hindi dapat binibili. And to uh, imbue it with power, may ibang ritual pa na ginagawa na hiwa-hiwalay sa pagbibigay nito. Tapos, um, sabi sir, ni sir Magpantay, um, sabi po ni Sir Andre Palyon, have you interviewed or responded with Baon? Do they also practice panubok as a ritual to check their so-called power? Uh, I I didn't understand po yung huli. Interviewed with, ano po yun? Uh, yeah, have you interviewed a respond a respondent with Baon? Do they hmm. also practice panubok as a ritual to check their so-called power? Panubok. Panubok. Uh, hindi po ako aware dun. Adun sa yung naunang term. But panubok, merong practice dito sa Batangas na merong ritual to check the anting-anting's power. And I do agree dun sa ipinamama ng anting-anting. Pero ang medyo mahirap nga siyang pag-aralan kasi uh, meron talagang different kinds. Merong Catholic related, merong anting-anting na nabibili, merong anting-anting na ipinamama na, and merong anting-anting na galing lang sa iba, uh, maraming bagay. But yung panubok na ginagawa nila is meron silang itak. Uh, this is a part uh, sa Batangas na i na ipinapalo sa sa bandang chan pa maging epektibo itong para mas subok kung yung anting-anting. I don't know if that's the meaning of panubok pero ayun yung yung account na natanong ko nung huli. Yun po. Thank you so much po. Maraming salamat po sa mga Meron tumanong lang 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 hapon. <laughs> Meron lang comment para kay Arvin. Sige po sir. Arvin, um, napakaganda ng papel mo dahil sa binigay mo yung mga <clears throat> yung the situation in those times. But of course, these are all from Spanish accounts. And these are the thinking of the Spaniards. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm very careful about interpreting these uh, writings, except that it's, it's interesting to know that the Spaniards saw that the people wanted to practice their old religion. And that is very important to note that in those times, uh, the people of Cagayan saw the Spaniards as really oppressors. You know? And they were, they were depriving the people of their own identity as, as, uh, in terms of their religious practices, as, the, as what the Spaniards were reporting. And that to me is very important. And in terms of music, that is also very important because the moment you prohibit the, rit the ritual, you prohibit the music and the music disappears. Ganun ang nangyari sa mga lowlanders. Kaya ang, ang musika ng Pilipinas sa uh, buong lowland is all westernized because all our rituals were prohibited by the Spaniards and they were substituted by Catholic rituals. So ganun ang nangyari. But it's very, I'm, I would like to look, uh, I would like to source out again your, uh, your sources and uh, look at whether there are certain musical references to that, which is to me very interesting. Yeah? Pag pinatigil mo yung mga rituals, wala na yung musika. Kaya yeah, eventually nawala lahat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much po. Sobrang siksik, liglig at umaapaw ang diskusyon ngayong hapon para sa last session sa anibersaryo ng ASP. So, um, muli maraming salamat po sa lahat ng dumalo. Ako po si Shirin Di Amboy mula sa Politeknikong Universidad ng Pilipinas at istudyante ng Archaeological Studies Program. Please, ang ka ba?
Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Shireen. And to our speakers, Mr. Pingo, Mr. Magpantay, and Dr. Nicolas, and of course, Professor Paz, and to all of you who made the discussion very interesting. And so uh, that ends the last session of our conference.